Mr. Murali. I declare my interest as a disputes lawyer, occasionally dealing with criminal cases, including matters involving the Criminal Law Temporary Provisions Act. The Criminal Law Temporary Provisions Act was enacted in 1955 for an initial period of five years to make temporary provisions for the maintenance of public order. As highlighted in the title of the Act itself, the provisions of the Act were meant to be temporary to address threats to public safety and order in Singapore as necessary. In 1955, this was to address threats posed by secret societies and gangsters. Since then, the nature of threats have expanded and evolved to include criminal activities such as drug trafficking, murder, gang rape, robbery with firearms, syndicated crime organizations, unlicensed money lending, and human trafficking. These are all serious criminal activities that have been mentioned during the second reading of earlier amendment bills to extend the Act. Because of this, Parliament had deemed it necessary to extend the Act for a further successive period of five years each time, which is now due to expire on the 20th of October 2019. While the extension of the Act continues to allow for preventive detection, uh, sorry, while the extension of the Act continues to allow for preventive detention without trial, that concept itself next my conscience to use the words of parliamentarians in the House before, in light of the hard facts that the threat of such serious crimes continue to exist to seriously threaten our public order and safety in Singapore, I feel compelled to support this bill. In arriving at this conclusion, I'm aware that the statistics show that the detention orders are on the downtrend, principally because the CLTPA is used as a matter of last resort. My assessment, though, is that the current situation is reversible. The Honourable Minister's narration of how just in 2017, two gangs were crippled using the CLTPA is evidence of this. The elements that promote secret societies and gang-related crime are far from being licked. They have been around for decades. Their roots are deeply embedded within our society. We also need to be mindful about the crime and drug environment just outside our borders, too. In my assessment, there's a danger that secret society activities and gang-related crime in Singapore may proliferate if we were to allow these exceptional measures to deal with such problems to expire at this point in time. For this reason, I support the extension of this bill for another five years. Notwithstanding my position, I have a few queries for the Minister. This bill seeks to amend the Act to extend the operation of the Act for a further five years beginning 21st October 2019. Given that this act is only due to expire on 20 October 2019, it appears rather early to seek an extension of the act approximately 20 months before it is due to expire. This amounts to about one third of the period of the five year extension period. Mr. Speaker, sir, with your leave, may I be allowed to distribute a handout to the honorable members of the house? Yes, please. Mr. Speaker, sir, the honourable members of the House would note from the table uh, the length of time between the first reading of the amendment bill and the expiry date of the Act for the period 1969 to 2013. It is apparent from the table that this is the earliest time before the expiry of the Act that an extension has been sought. The sunset clause in the Act is a safeguard to ensure periodic scrutiny by Parliament. This allows Parliament to be apprised of the prevailing landscape in particular to consider the prevalence of serious crimes and weigh it against the need for public safety and order so as to decide if the original justification and basis for the Act continues. Seeking an extension too early before expiry of the Act thus reduces the effect of the safeguard as Parliament would not have the benefit of being apprised of the most current crime, security and drug situation in Singapore close to the expiry of the Act to decide whether or not to extend it. 
I recognize that the present bill also seeks to make amendments to other provisions of the Act. However, these other amendments may be dealt with separately within the five-year period the Act is in force, so that such amendments would not take away from the issue of whether there is a basis for Parliament to extend the operation of the Act. This was done before on several occasions in this House. For example, in 1981, before extension was sought in 1984, the Act was amended to enable detainees to be temporarily released from custody so that they could engage in outside employment to facilitate their rehabilitation. I'll be grateful if the Honourable Minister could please explain why the Government has decided to seek an extension of the Act at this point in time, which is quite some time far away from the expiry of the Act. Recognising that the Parliament would need to be apprised of the latest security landscape in order to consider the case for extension of the Act, what's the Government's policy framework? that determines when parliamentary approval to extend the Act would be sought. I seek further clarifications on the proposed amendments to Section 30 of the Act, and Honourable Members have spoken about this, in particular the decision to make uh, the Minister's decision final uh, on the issue of whether or not a person has been associated with activities of a criminal nature. I understand from Minister's clarification that uh, the proposed amendment was meant to, if I could use the words, codify the approach taken by the Court of Appeal in Tanning Sid, in that the Court recognised that the Minister is competent to determine whether a person's detention would be in the interest of public safety, peace and good order. Would, is it also meant to codify the judicial review approach taken by the Court of Appeal, meaning to employ the, what is known as the traditional test of illegality, irrationality or procedural impropriety on an objective plane? If so, would it not run the danger of the court not being able to update its approach to judicial review of executive action in the future as our society develops? Another proposed amendment to Section 30 is to define activities of a criminal nature to a list of activities specified in the fourth schedule. This is a departure from the previously taken po position opting not to specify a list of offences or, or criminal activities for which the Act would be deployed. I understand from the Honourable Minister that this, this is to promote clarity on what kind of activities are contemplated. In specifying a list of activities of a criminal nature, I'm concerned that this would unduly tie down the Minister's hands. As the then Second Minister of, for Home Affairs, Mr. Iswaran, said in this House in 2013, I quote, criminal groups reorganize and rework themselves constantly, and new forms of serious criminal activities evolve in a borderless world assisted by advances in technology, unquote. Recognizing this, Specifying the list of type of criminal activities may instead inhibit our ability to keep pace with creative criminals and possibly dampen the de deterrent effect of the Act. For example, it is very possible that illegal betting activities may entail activities of a sufficiently serious criminal nature to fall within the Act, as has been said in this House on a number of occasions, and which has been distilled by the Court of Appeal in Tan Eng Sit's case, the main unifying features of the, for the offences for which this act was meant to apply are first, they feature situations where witnesses fear to testify because of reprisal against them. Second, they are of a sufficiently serious nature. And third, they pose a threat to the public order in Singapore. In this context, the amendment to restrict the type of cat or categories of criminal activity may cause us to be less nimble in tackling the evolving types of criminal activities. I'll be grateful for the Minister's clarification on this point. One last point, I'm heartened to note the Minister's confirmation that even in respect of the specific types or specified types of criminal activities listed in the proposed fourth schedule, the activities must still be one of sufficiently serious nature and involve issues concerning public safety, peace, and good order of Singapore to fall within the ambit of Section 30 to warrant detention. This is important to ensure that the powers are used sparingly and only in 
exceptional cases.